हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर नंबर फाइव वी विल स्टडी अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ हाइड्रोलिक पंप्स नेमली गियर पंप्स स्क्रू पंप्स सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द हाइड्रोलिक पंप इज द फंक्शन ऑफ पंप इज टू कन्वर्ट द मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इनटू हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी इट इज द हार्ट ऑफ हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम बिकॉज इट जनरेट्स द फोर्स नेसेसरी टू मूव द लोड मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इज डिलीवर्ड टू द पंप यूजिंग अ प्राइम मूवर सच एज इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर पार्शियल वैक्यूम इज क्रिएटेड एट द इनलेट ड्यू टू द मैकेनिकल रोटेशन ऑफ द पंप शाफ्ट सो टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस लेट एस कंसिडर दिस फिगर के दिस फिगर एक्सप्लेन्स द बेसिक पंपिंग प्रिंसिपल यू कैन सी दैट देर इज अ रिजर्व वायर देर इज अ स्टेनर एंड दिस इज अ रेसिप्रोकेटिंग पंप ओके सो एज रॉड मूव आउटवर्ड इट क्रिएट्स द सक्शन एट द इनलेट लाइन Uh, at that time inlet valve is open and out, uh, outlet valve is closed so because of this the fluid gets in uh, when uh, the fluid has to get delivered to the output line the inlet valve closes the delivery valve opens and uh, the rod moves towards inward because of this uh, the fluid get pressurized to the application area so uh, basically the hydro hydraulic pumps are classified into two types one is called as non positive displacement type and another is positive displacement type uh, non positive displacement types are also called as hydrodynamic pump uh, th those are having a range up to 7 to 20 uh, 17 to 20 bar uh, now uh, there is a basic difference between uh, these non positive and positive pump is that uh, for non positive pump Uh, the discharge uh, output discharge is sensitive to the output pressure whereas uh, in positive displacement type of pump uh, the output discharge is not at all uh, related to the pressure in the system okay so this is the basic difference uh, this difference you can see in this particular uh, diagram where you can see that uh, as the pressure increases uh, in case of positive displacement type of pump Uh, the flow is constant irrespective of the pressure but in case of non positive type the as the pressure increases the flow decreases now uh, non positive displacement type of pumps are usually found in uh, the lab which you have studied uh, the tur turbo machinery lab okay all pumps were there are hydrodynamic type but in industrial fluid pad lab lab all the pumps which you find are hydrostatic type those are having high pressure up to 800 bar having high volumetric efficiency and how high power to weight ratio and more precise control so based on the delivery the pumps are classified as non uh, on as a constant delivery pumps and variable delivery pumps uh, based on the uh, motion they, those are classified as rotary pump and reciprocating pump so the major uh, one more phenomenon which occurs in uh, pump is called as a cavitation okay so cavitation is nothing but the formation of low pressure region at the inlet of the pump uh, uh, which travels uh, to the delivery line and those bubble get collapse at uh, certain location where because of uh, that they will cause the high localized pressure and fluid velocity uh, causing the erosion of the material piping material okay Uh, so uh, uh, the, uh, some of the factors which cause co cavitations are undersizing plumbing uh, clog lines high fluid velocity and too much elevation head between the reservoir and the pump inlet so because of these four reasons you will find there is a cavitation in the pump so uh, we can easily eliminate cavitation by keeping the fluid lo uh, velocity is low below 1.2 meter per second Uh, uh minimizing the number of fittings in the inlet line uh, keeping the pump inlet lines as short as possible mount pump as close as to the reservoir uh, low pressure drop at the inlet filters and use uh, oil only recommended by the pump manufacturer so there are certain parameters which are uh, on the basis of which you need to select the pump for the application first is you need to note that what is the maximum pressure second you must know what is the maximum delivery pressure third uh, what type of a control is expected fourth uh, pump 
uh, drive speed what is the pump uh, speed which you uh, which you need then fifth uh, type of fluid which you are going to use uh, in the hydraulic circuit sixth pump contamination tolerance which type uh, how much contaminant uh, uh, the atmosphere is and how much contaminants can be tolerated seventh is pump noise how much noise you can tolerate at the application site uh, then uh, size and weight of the pump so what what is the space available at the uh, uh, application site that uh, really decides which type of pump you need to use then pump efficiency uh, the cost of operation you need to take it into account the and, and then availability and interchangeability of the parts and maintenance of the spares so these are uh, some important factors which decides the selection of the pump. Uh, so uh, the major thing is that uh, pump performance curve. So every manufacturer provides you uh, with the pump performance curve. These are nothing but the uh, uh, guidelines to operate the pump with respect to one of the independent parameter with that is speed. So the flow and power uh, are plotted against the speed that will uh, that will give you a pump performance curve. So for a particular flow uh, from an application, uh, you can find out what is the flow which is required in the pump and from the uh, that particular flow value, you can uh, transfer that uh, uh, that value to this speed and then you can get that uh, how much speed at which you should rotate your pump. Okay, so these are nothing but a guideline for a, a person to operate the pump. So those are called as pump performance curve. So uh, these are the curve for efficiency against speed. So uh, you can see that at uh, the speed increases, the volumetric efficiency increases. Uh, but uh, as the speed increases, the mechanical efficiency drops because of uh, because of the mechanical losses. Because of which you what you can find that uh, the overall efficiency, which is nothing but the product of volumetric efficiency and mechanical efficiency, will raise up to certain level and after that it will drop okay so this drop is because of the mechanical losses so uh, the overall efficiency uh, is nothing but the product of volumetric efficiency and mechanical efficiency that is the point which you need to remember here then uh, come to the uh, first type of pump for those are called as gear pumps so uh, as you look into this diagram what you can find is that uh, the high pressure region is uh, generated uh, the suction is generated at the inlet because of the disengagement of these two gear wheels and uh, the high pressure at the outlet is generated by engagement of these two wheels. So because of this engagement and disengagement of these two rotating uh, gears, you can find out that uh, there is a pressure differential which is created and the uh, fluid is uh, uh, transmitted to the application area through the outlet and the uh, at the inlet line because of the low pressure the hydraulic fluid gets sucked in automatically so uh, the so the so uh, this is the uh, external type of gear pump okay there are some other versions like inlet uh, internal gear pumps where you can find that uh, the internal gear is rotating and this is the external ring which is there and you can see that there is a crescent which is getting formed crescent uh, crescent which is getting formed because of the uh, eccentricity of this uh, internal gear with respect to the casing of the pump okay so here what you can find that because of the uh, this crescent there is a pressure difference which is created and uh, at the start of the crescent there is an inlet at the end of the crescent there is an outlet so as the fluid passes through this crescent there is uh, the fluid gets pressurized so this is internal gear pump uh, this is the formula for uh, uh, theoretical discharge uh, for the pump which is uh, d0 square minus di square into l into n uh, where n is number of teeth okay uh, l is the contact length and uh, D0 and DI are the outer and inner diameter for the gear. So uh, gear rotor pumps, uh, these are another type of gear pumps. Uh, gear rotor pumps operate in the same manner as the internal gear pump. Uh, the, inner, uh, the inner gear rotor is called as a G rotor element. 
the shear rotor element is driven by the prime mover and during the operation it drives the outer gear motor around as they mesh together the gear rotor has one tooth less than the outer internal uh, idler gear each tooth of the gear rotor is always sliding in uh, contact with the surface of the outer element the teeth of the two element engages at just one's place to the seal and the pumping chambers from each other that means uh, as this gear rotor rotates uh, it forms uh, it has one teeth less than the outer uh, outer casing because of which uh, there is a formation of the pressure region so low pumps are very common uh, low pumps uh, has application in uh, uh, let's say uh, toothpaste industry you can find out that uh, these are called as lobes okay so uh, the action is same as that of uh, gear pump uh, just uh, the instead of gear the we have a lobes so this is the uh, this uh, diagram which gives the action of the lobe pump it is mainly used in a paper industry or a toothpaste industry uh, to handle slurry or paste so this is a screw type of pump this is this gives a very quiet operation uh, because uh, the working principle is just engagement and disengagement of the uh, screw threads you can find that there are those are two gears and there is a very quiet operation uh, the fluid uh, enters at the start of this uh, these two screws which where these screws two two screws are meshing okay as these two screws rotate the fluid has to pass through this uh, small area and because of which uh, it naturally gets pressurized uh, from the outlet so screw pump are uh, well known for the their quieter operation and mainly used in pharmaceutical industries so there are some disadvantages that they are very strong and bulky as that they are sensitive to the viscosity change in the fluid uh, they are having low volumetric and mechanical efficiency as you can see that uh, the uh, the amount of fluid which can be pumped at uh, one particular time is very less because of which there is a, a low volumetric efficiency and the manufacturing and uh, uh, precision cost uh, manufacturing cost is very high because it requires uh, precision machining of these screw threads so that's all for uh, a screw pump uh, in next lecture we will study about vane pumps